Okay, hi guys, how's it going? So I'm out here amongst a billion, billion, billion of rabbit droppings in the middle of nowhere, middle of all the, uh, the sand dunes. So I thought I'd fly a few batteries and have a little chat about getting into FPV. So FPV quad, quadcopters, flying little performance quads, uh, all the rest of it. Obviously, uh, I've been flying sort of um, you know DJI gear, you know Phantoms and the rest of it for since the Phantom 2, I think, so many, many years. Uh, only been doing this for a few months, so I'm no expert, but I thought I'd chat about what it's like getting into this hobby, sport, whatever you want to call it. Um, so let's have a look at the gear, and we'll go from there. So this is what we've got going on here, and we have this one here. Is a This is an iFlight uh, DC5, basically. Um, it's a, the 4S model. It's basically like a little freestyle kind of cruiser uh, quad. So that's that one. Then we've got the uh, Bumblebee. This is another iFlight model. These these iFlight iFlight seems to be killing it with these sort of cheap um, little quads that are ready to fly out of the box and they're, they're tuned up pretty well. All the rest of it makes makes life very easy for the the beginner. So that's the iFlight Bumblebee, which is what they call a cine whoop. As you can tell, you've got the uh, the props are in little ducks there. You've got little foam padding around the outside, so it's much much safer to fly in close proximity. You know, indoors around people, you would not want to fly this near anyone at all because it really is quite lethal and very fast. Uh, and I fly all of this on the DJI gear, so I've got the DJI RC and DJI uh, goggles. Now, obviously. Um, because it's DJI, they've both got the air units in them, so you can't really see this one, but inside there you've got the, the air unit, and then in this one here, the little silver bit here, that is the DJI air unit, and on the front of there is both the DJI camera that comes with the air unit. They have different flight controllers uh, down here at the bottom, but basically the air unit's in charge of receiving the signal and transmitting the video uh, and doing all the kind of, you know, hard work in terms of um, uh, controlling the craft and actually uh, transmitting the video to the, the goggles so you can see what the quad can see. And then you have a basically uh, a flight controller which manages the power uh, and that's that's an, these in these two models, those are iFlight, our little flight controllers. I'll put the model on the screen because I can't remember it, but they just basically manage the power um, but the air unit's telling them what to do in terms of what control interactions you're doing. So anyway, so yeah, just a sort of general chat really. Um, obviously I, I come from a sort of um, cinematography sort of background, so I'm interested in getting good shots. So the first thing I do is I stick on a decent uh, GoPro, that's the Hero 8 Black, that can go straight onto there. Or a lot of people use these uh, Session 5s because they're smaller and lighter, so they obviously allow for slightly longer flight times and you don't lose quite as much maneuverability because there's not quite so much weight, but you do get a better image out of these, uh, these Hero 8s. Um, and in general, yeah, so I find this to be a really, really compelling hobby and it's lovely that it combines um, the sort of exhilarating flight that you really, I can't really see anyone getting in any other way because you really do feel like a bird, you really do feel like you're living in the experience of the drone and you're in complete control. Uh, so it has that sort of, uh, that... Uh, escapism kind of thing uh, going on. It has the nerdiness of all this tech, so it has that, which is which tickles my nerd bone. Uh, and then it has the fact that you can get shots that you couldn't get any other way. Um, lots of sort of really fast acrobatic maneuvers, obviously, which you couldn't you couldn't do with like a DJI drone or something like that. Um, but also putting them in really small spaces. I've only been flying the uh, the cine whoops for a short time, but I'm already starting to fly them indoors. I was getting some shots in my friend's uh, workshop recently, flying it around him, all that kind of thing. Mainly, I'm, st I'm still at the practicing stage. I'm not quite mastering that yet, but I'm certainly enjoying the, the process of learning. Uh, I can certainly see there is, an, there is an option to earn some money getting sort of like real estate shots and things like that with these where you can do one shot that, that covers the whole of the property and outside and everything all in one fluid flowing uh, shot. So yeah, it's, it's a fascinating sort of um, area to get into if you're into sort of cinematography and, and videography like I am basically. So yeah, so I find, because I've not ever used the analog stuff, I've only used this, I can't really give you a comparison of what this is like compared to the, the previous technology, but I can just say that these, these seem to be very reliable uh, and it's just a nice experience. I, I do get a fair amount of light leak, 
around the side of the goggles, um, me personally. Uh, I think that's a shared experience with many people. I basically have to wear my hat when I'm using that or I put a coat over my head because I get a lot of light leak around there. But when I'm wearing my hat and I put the goggles on, uh, sort of overlapping the hat, then it's a perfect fit and it actually works perfectly. And I wear a hat quite a lot anyway because I've got no hair, so I don't really mind that. But yeah, so they're not perfect. You can get aftermarket um, foam inserts, which will help with that. But either way, the experience I've had with these, it, everything's kind of quite effortless. You just turn it on, it syncs up, it chooses the channel for you. If you're flying around uh, other friends that have got the same gear, it you know it just chooses the channel and does all that kind of stuff. From my understanding, you know the previous analog experience was very different for that. You know, like someone would turn up and turn their quad on, and then all of a sudden they might be on the same channel as someone else, and then their quad would just fall out of the sky because they've dominated the channel that they're using. Uh, you don't have that kind of problem with this. It is much, much, much easier to use. But saying that, I have kind of had to learn a lot of things that I didn't expect I had to learn because these are both um, what they call bind and fly, you know, ready to fly models. They come pre-made, pre-installed, pre-tuned. So you should be able to just get them out of the box and fly them. But I have had a fair amount of problems and I have had to learn to solder and I have had to learn a lot about beta flight, which is the, uh, the, the software which basically manages, you know, the, the performance of the quad in terms of um, the, it manages the flight controller basically, so it determines how, how they perform. Um, I've had to, I, I decided that I needed a buzzer, and again I got a really ghetto little uh, buzzer on the back here, because I, I've dropped it once um, and basically couldn't find it, and then I, I realised you need a buzzer, so I've installed a buzzer on that, so I had to learn to solder for that. Um, have had some other issues where I've had to do little repairs, and I had to learn to solder for that as well. Uh, and yeah, there's, there is just a very steep learning curve. In terms of actually controlling the devices, big, 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 big steep learning curve. And in terms of maintaining them and sort of tuning them, uh, it, it's, it's, it is a lot more to learn than what you expect when you first get into it. And I was kind of expecting to have to learn a lot of stuff, but it's even more than that. Um, you know, and I, I think that's a shared experience. I've been chatting to lots of people on the forums, you know, the Facebook forums and all the rest of it. And that seems to be very consistent um, experience. Generally, everybody has this horrible steep learning curve at the beginning. They can't get things to bind. They can't get the quad to work how they want it to. They have problems and they can't figure out what the hell's going on. Uh, my friend bought exactly the same drone as this. And on his very first flight, a motor burnt out and it fell out the sky. And obviously when you're ordering things from like China, um, you have these, they have, first of all, you have the big long wait before you get the equipment. Then the, the, the service is never going to be the same as what it would be buying, you know, sort of from a, a retailer or something in this country. Uh, they sent him a motor for free, but now he's, even though he's never, he's flown the drone once and he's already got to learn how to solder to fix the new motor on there because they wouldn't just give him a new one. They've just sent him a new motor in the post. So he has to, he has to take it all apart and solder it all together. So that just gives you an idea of the problems that you could uh, face. I'm not, you know, some people no doubt probably do get these things and they work great out of box and there's absolutely zero problems whatsoever. Other people, not so much. But definitely the weak link is not in the DJI stuff because that stuff really is very user friendly, very easy to use, very understandable. The weak link is in the assembly of the drones, the, the quality of how well it's built in terms of the components and you know you even hear a lot of people saying that they get these things um, from China brand new ready to fly drones and all the screws aren't even tight you know they have to go around and <laughs> tighten the screws otherwise it was just going to shake itself to bits uh, and also you want to make sure you're getting like lock tight on the screws so that you know it's not getting looser and looser and looser you know the last thing you want is like a, a motor becoming loose mid-flight because that's just a recipe for you know, disaster, obviously. So anyway, let's um, fly a couple of uh, batteries. Um, it's just, let's kind of talk briefly about the, the, the flight performance differences. So on your sort of performance freestyle quads, these are the ones that are really good fun to learn. They are a lot more dangerous, they're a lot harder, but these are really, really good fun to, to fly. I wouldn't recommend really getting a Cine Whoop unless you specifically want to fly in very close close quarters and you want to get shots you know in next to obstacles you know in between tree branches and all that kind of thing um, and near people this is obviously much 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 safer um, but it's not really that much fun to fly to be perfectly honest with you it just flies like a tank and it's very affected by wind and it's they're quite underpowered as well so 
you know, bear that in mind. You, you, I wouldn't really recommend one of these unless you specifically want to get a sticker camera on it and get types of shots that you can't get any other way because uh, that is obviously what they're for and that's what I'm going to be using it for. Um, but they're not really not that much fun to fly, to be perfectly honest with you, in, in, com in comparison to something like that. Anyway, let's, um, it's, let's whack a GoPro on and we'll do a couple of flights and then, yeah, I'll sort of talk you through experience as I'm flying. Okay, let's have a quick flight and we'll chat about uh, performance differences. So this is the this is the DC5. Let's just pop it up and we're okay. So this thing really does rip. Fly it fast and hard. Do loops. Get up high quickly. Follow fast moving objects cars and things like that. It can also be quite controlled. Controlled for the slow, uh, slower flying as well if you wish. So if you want to get it up high, you just whack the power up and you're high very very quickly. Okay, that'll do for a little, it's quite fun doing back loops. Rolls. All sorts of stuff. Okay, let's bring that in for a little lap. We'll pop the uh, city up just so you can see the difference. I'm not the best. I'm still learning, but I'm getting there. So, yeah, that is the sort of a uh, Sort of flights you're going to be able to get out of the DC5 after um, a pretty short amount of time of um, flying, and it is just a lot of fun. It really is. It's kind of lethal and it's kind of hard to control uh, in, in the early stages, but if you spend a bit of time on the flight simulator, you should be fine, absolutely fine. Let's pop. Let's get the other drone out. Okay, get nice and close. I normally stand up doing this, but I'm trying to uh, tuck in out the wind a little bit by sitting down. Don't think it's working, but either way. So power up. So this is in acro mode at the moment. A lot of people will fly these in angle mode or stab mode, stability mode, because it just doesn't really actually like doing the sort of freestyle trick like if I just show you. So you can get it to flip. But it's just really not what it's for. It doesn't really like it. So a lot of people fly using angle mode, so I've now turned on stability mode. So now if I let go of the right stick, it just tries to stay level. Uh, it'll get blown away, it's quite breezy today. And, and this little drone really is very effective by the wind. But it is just nice and easy to fly in close proximity. Like I said, it's quite breezy today, so it's, this is quite tricky. But you get the idea. A very, very different beast. Not as fast, not as agile, but much, much safer. It's flying in very, very... That'll do. Any landing you can walk away from is, is a good one, as they say. Yeah, completely different beast. Let me stop the GoPro. Um, definitely nowhere near as much fun flying this thing uh, as you can probably tell it's, it's a bit of a turd in the sky like it gets blown by the wind it's not that maneuverable uh, it's a little bit a bit underpowered even the 6s versions are a bit underpowered you know in comparison to a freestyle quad um, but like I said if, if this if you're gonna have something bumping into your head you'd much rather have this than the uh, the DC5 because this thing will cut you to ribbons um, so yeah much much safer so you know and also even if you do bump into things it's not like the end of your day whereas if you bump into a tree with this thing you're probably gonna snap a prop and then you know the, the quads are either gonna fall out the sky or it's gonna be stuck in the tree whereas this thing is way more robust much much more robust uh, much more you know 
much more uh, hardy, I should say. Um, so yeah, so there's pros and cons to both, but um, you, you can get shots with this, with this type of rig that you just really couldn't, or you couldn't safely with any other type of quad. So yeah, anyway, there it goes. That's, that's a little look at the difference between a couple of different sort of um, FPV quads. Anyway, let's, uh, let's, have a, let's have a look at something else. Thank you. 